Okay, uh, let's get going. I don't know what this kind of video is going to be called in the future, but I, I'm going to call it right now a progress update. Uh, I want to try to keep you up to date on the progress I'm making and open it up for questions as I'm learning something if you want to ask a question in the comments section. So not really sure if this type of a segment or video is going to work, but let's uh, give it a shot. And as always, if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. And I hope you will uh, consider subscribing and help build the community uh, around this channel. Uh, and as always, questions and comments are what drive a channel. So I had a good night last night. It was clear. My goal last night was to go out and plate solve. To uh, Through plate solving, when your mount moves to the target you want it to move to, sometimes it's not in the center. And I think this is called near plate solving as opposed to blind plate solving. Uh, but I was able to get plate solving uh, working uh, last night. But before I go into that, I just want to briefly say this is the interface uh, right here to um, Pole Master. Uh, I was able, oh, I closed it down. Where did it go? Um, I was able to. Polar align in 10 minutes last night. Uh, the first time I tried to polar align with the pole master, the QHY pole master, it took me about 30 minutes because I was trying to make sure I understand the different templates and uh, prompts that it presents. But last night I was up and running uh, in, as far as a polar alignment goes in 10 minutes. And um, for $299, I know these are challenging times, budgets are tight. For me, it was uh, an investment that uh, paid off. Uh, so I'm really excited about the uh, QHY Pole Master. Um, the other thing I want to uh, update everybody on is I have decided no longer to trial Sequence Generator Pro. Um, I was struggling with it a little bit. And my thought was, let me fire up Astro Photography Tool and give it a shot. And again, I am kind of one of those people that like to try to get stuff done without reading the manual. So I poke and hope a bit. Um, my poking and hoping in Sequence Generator Pro uh, was not getting me very far. And when I go into the Sequence Generator Pro uh, manual, uh, documentation very exhaustive but part of that is because there's so many features so I fired up Astro Photography Tool last night and decided let me give it an honest shot and let me take some time to understand the interface and by the end of the night I was very happy and part of that was I was making progress so I'm gonna stay with Astro Photography Tool going forward maybe uh, down the road, I'll bring back up Sequence Generator Pro, uh, but um, you know that $149 for Sequence Generator Pro was always in the back of my mind. And last night I was able to get uh, plate solving done and do my image captures last night of M43, the Orion Nebula, which I will uh, show you the results of that in a moment. But um, you know, I started digging around in the interface. This is the uh, over here, uh, I've kept looking for plate solve, but really they have point craft, and that's the option you want to bring up. And then there's a settings where you can have three different plate solvers. Essentially, I chose plate solve two, it was pretty easy to set up, it gives you the download option, and uh, so that was very cool. And then down here, uh, there's an objects database where you can select your object and I forget which oh M43 so I selected this one and then it populates the uh, uh, coordinates uh, for you so pretty slick and um, you know I'm looking forward to making progress with astrophotography tool when my needs get more complex, maybe Sequence Generator Pro is is the place to go. I don't know, but right now this is uh, this is uh, I'm pretty excited about it. I'm glad I made the change, 
and it will support dedicated uh, astronomy cameras and, and all that stuff. So that's all I really wanted to say uh, about this. I did uh, play around with uh, PhD2 last night. I was able to, using my GuideScope camera and GuideScope, I was be able to bring up a star field. I was able to select a star. Uh, I didn't quite understand the calibration process and I was messing around with it while I was doing data acquisition and then um, I think the calibration kicked in and then I started getting star trails so I, I, I uh, cut it off and then I, I ended my data acquisition but I still wound up last night with 124 uh, good lights um, and then uh, finally, the other thing is I said I was not going to use a light pollution filter, uh, but I decided last night to take my uh, astronomic uh, uh, clip-in filter for my Canon 60 and, and use it. I'm going to use it. Later on, when I'm getting proficient at data acquisition and starting to build some image processing tools uh, or image processing capabilities, Maybe I'll take the filter out and then I can do a comparison. But right now, as a beginner in a Bortle 8 zone, I want every advantage that I can get when it comes to trying to tame light pollution. And yes, there's a lot of back and forth and debate on whether a light pollution filter helps you or, help, or, or hurts you. Um, I'm in a Class 8, a Bortle Class 8 zone. I don't know if it helps me or hurts me, but I'm going to go with it for right now, and then down the road I can I can do the uh, comparisons. All right, so let's uh, let's get out of here. And so again, as I said, going forward, I'm going uh, with a APT Astrophotography Tool. I just paid my twenty-three dollars and seventy-three cents via PayPal to get a licensed copy, so I'm licensed now. Uh, I'm uh, I'm committed to it. All right, so let's jump into M43 and my efforts last night. So I guess this is, uh, where are you at? Uh, there we, oh no, I don't want that. Uh, oh, here we go. So I think I shared with you before, this is Astro Pixel Processor. I purchased a licensed copy of this. I forget how much the renter's copy was in the $70 range. And this is the result of my work last night. Uh, I ran it through the left-hand side, which is kind of the stacking and integration. There's many things wrong with this image. Um, and there's a whole lot I don't know about how to improve the image on the image processing side. Uh, but I was pretty happy that I was able to get light through my telescope and I was able to uh, capture the, uh, the light files and do the calibra calibration frames and everything and then put it all together through uh, Astro Pixel Processor and, and get this type of a result. If I kind of scroll out uh, on the, well that's the wrong way, you know, there's things here like the uh, darker red areas around the edge of the image, you know, and those type of things that I still need to understand. I don't know if there's some tilt in my system. So there's a lot of things I don't know. But, you know, sometimes when you're a beginner, you need like many, many successes. So uh, this was uh, the result of uh, last night work, last night's work. So... I'm thinking tonight of using this target again and then capturing a bunch more lights and calibration frames and then see if I uh, can learn how to uh, integrate two nights worth of work because oftentimes if you can't get enough integration time or enough uh, exposure time in one night you're going to want to capture your data over multiple nights and then and then bring it together so I'm going to um, I'm going to take a look at that and again uh, I haven't gone into the tools section over here where there's some other things I can do to cor correct vignetting remove light pollution calibrate background and that 
again, I'm trying to go slow to go fast. I don't want to do something. Uh, I want to understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. But anyway, I just wanted to show uh, the results of last night's efforts uh, to kind of keep you up to date. So next on the list is um, I've got plate solving going. I may bring in the other two plate solvers into uh, APT and make sure that they're available within that tool. Um, auto guiding is up. Again, I started the process last night, so I'm going to focus on getting auto guiding going. And then if I'm successful in getting auto guiding going, uh, then I can look into doing dithering. And that would kind of then get me that that set of tools that I want to have available and understand as part of the uh, data acquisition process. All right, well, I, I think that's about it. I hope this type of a segment works. Um, I love hearing from people in the comments. Carlos, you're just uh, starting to get your, uh, your William Optics uh, uh, T81, I believe, and, um, you know, it's just uh, it's just a great time, I think, to be uh, uh, looking into deep sky object imaging. At least it is for me. And uh, you know, five six weeks ago, I was just kind of sitting there thinking about it, and then uh, you know, now I've actually started the journey and starting to uh, acquire data. I I do want to probably make a video on a couple of mounts that I was looking at initially, and that's the uh, Skywatcher Star Adventure and then uh, Ioptron uh, Skyguider, or I, I forget the name. Uh, I'm thinking about down the road, I may want a more lightweight mount to have when we travel in the RV or we go to a, a dark site somewhere. Um, the weight of my current telescope with camera and everything is does not exceed what those mounts can handle and again when it comes to mounts a lot of it's about the payload and how much you want to put on it that uh, should be part of your decision making process so I'm thinking about uh, sharing that uh, type of information for people that are new and maybe haven't made mount decisions yet and then I think I'm just going to do a, a quick video about how I started with my camera a Rokinon lens my tripod using Backyard EOS and just manually uh, repositioning the target in the center of the frame after so many exposures. I mean, there's uh, you don't have to have a big heavy mount uh, to do deep sky object imaging. Uh, there's plenty of people that are using DSLRs on uh, smaller mounts uh, that get the job done Maybe they can't handle the payload of a much larger telescope, but they're getting the job done. So anyway, uh, that's about it. Thanks again for dropping into the channel. Give me some feedback if these types of updates are of any value, so I know if I should continue doing them as I'm progressing. Uh, I also see them as an opportunity. If you see me having accomplished something, uh, then maybe you ask some questions uh, with the expectation since I did it and you know what tools I'm using that maybe I can answer your question for you. And as always, if you're more experienced than me, please uh, give me feedback. Uh, help me get up the learning curve. And when you help me get up the learning curve through comments, uh, others who read the comments, uh, it helps them as well. So thanks again for dropping in. Till next time.